Hello wrestling fans, The Wrestling Wizard here and welcome to another video. Now whether you like him or hate him, you've got to respect him and in the end you're going to have to acknowledge him. The tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns has been dominant. On time of recording this video, he's held the universal title and this being the main one that's going to feature in this video for 739 days that's absolute madness and even this year he picked up the wwe title making him the undisputed champion of wwe so you've got to respect the man whether there's been some dodgy shenanigans throughout that um he still is the champ even tyson fury acknowledged roman reigns the cardiff fans definitely did not acknowledge roman reigns i could tell you that for free um, as i was there acknowledge me All the way back to payback, you have to go, 2020, that is when he had the Universal title, won the Universal title, stole the Universal title, you could say, by pinning Braun Strowman and costing The Fiend as well, who had that title before. And we'll get onto that in a moment. The last time Roman Reigns also was pinned, and this was the face version of Roman Reigns, by the way, the head of the table version has never been pinned uh, clean, in a one-to-one -one basis at TLC 2019. And do you know who the man was that last pinned Roman Reigns? Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. I do hope uh, they heat Corbin back up and um, because there could potentially be a storyline arc down the, down the road there. But nevertheless, it's a historic reign and that begs the question, what on earth are WWE going to do moving forward? Now, as always, all your thoughts and opinions are welcome. So get down in the comments section, share your ideas uh, creatively, and um, we'll have a bit of a ball with this. So, I did worry after Crash at the Castle because I thought, what on earth are they going to do with Roman Reigns moving forward? Like, who is he going to face? He's like pretty much beating everyone. Now, I do believe... Roman Reigns is going to have at least one of the titles until WrestleMania. And here is my kind of ideal booking scenario of Roman Reigns. Now, ideally, I'd have him at Extreme Rules, but due to his lucrative uh, contract um, and part-time schedule, you could argue, he's not going to be there, is he? The main draw there is going to be Drew versus um, Karrion Cross. So the last or the next time we're going to see Roman Reigns really is going to be at Crown Jewel. And to me, like you could play around with a fantasy booking match, <laughs> bring back Goldberg if you really want to, and just have Roman Reigns destroy Goldberg. Um, you could have him against an AJ Styles, a Bobby Lashley. I know he's US champ, but why not? Um, what about Sheamus? Now he seemingly seems to have turned to the face side, the good side. Um, he seems to be getting massive overreactions at the moment. Kevin Owens, yes, it's a rerun. There's, there's loads of matches. To be honest with you, you could have a, a multi-tag uh, team match. Um, you could have the Bloodline uh, versus the Brawling Brutes, Bloodline versus Imperium, which would be pretty cool. A returning Wyatt family would be a fantasy booking scenario. Uh, you can do pretty much whatever you like at Crown Jewel. The titles, if they ever get defended there, uh, are not leaving Roman Reigns. So say we get something like Lashley versus Roman Reigns, um, Roman Reigns will retain. He could defend the undisputed titles there, uh, but it'd be a match like that, I would see, um, and that'd be cool. So that then brings us on to Survivor Series. Now, this is a big deal this year because this is the 10-year anniversary of The Shield, and I hope they do some sort of tribute. As far as I'm aware, there's no bad blood between John Moxley, a.k.a. Dean Ambrose in WWE. Um, so, so, yeah, there could well be um, some form of tribute there. Now, when you think of Survivor Series, straight away it comes to my head. Seth Rickin Rollins versus Roman Reigns, getting the rematch that Rollins deserves. Now, Rollins has been a workhorse for WWE. He's been putting people over left, right, and centre. Triple H kind of needs to do him a favour after um, leaving him off the match card at SummerSlam, which he was legit pissed about. And no one's going to have a problem with seeing Rollins, uh, Rollins versus Roman Reigns at Survivor Series. Now, here is where I think things will change title-wise. This is the way I'll book it. You have the matchup, the two batter the heck out of each other. There's times when you genuinely think, due to a couple of close near pinfalls, that Rollins is going to win. And then, A-Town, down. You hear Theory come down. By the way, doesn't he have the best theme to, for like a Money in the Bank cash-in? <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? And I think Theory is often criticised too much. I think the kid's got a bright future. 
He comes in, doesn't get knocked out by Tyson Fury this time, and actually cashes in. Like, Fury actually cashing in for once? But it's not what you think. One of the officials comes down to the ring, uh, could be Adam Pearce, and goes, you need to pick one of the belts. So Theory picks the WWE title as he's on Raw, and now it's a triple threat match, Rollins, Reigns, and Theory. And uh, Rollins pins Theory, takes the WWE title. So now Rollins has got the WWE title, which we know is not as important to Roman Reigns' dominant uh, reign as champion. The amount of days he's held it for anyway. Reigns is still strong because he's not been pinned. He's still got that historic reign with the Universal title. And now you have a belt that's actually going to get shown on Monday Night Raw. And then Rollins can be that egotistic, like, irritable maniac all the way through till day one. And at day one, we know Brock Lesnar's been advertised for day one. And I'd like a Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins matchup, to be honest with you. A singles matchup there for the WWE title. Um, and, and you could leave Roman Reigns off the card. Again, at day one. Roman Reigns is too big a deal to be at a pay-per-view or premium event like day one, right? Um, and that's kind of cool because then you're like, what the heck is their plans with, with Roman Reigns? Now, in my opinion, Cody Rhodes should be the one to win the, the Royal Rumble. And then you've got Cody versus Rollins. Part two at WrestleMania, night one, and then we get that dream moment for Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes takes the belt, maybe changes the way the belt um, looks and appears, and there you go. You've got um, a title, a main title on Raw um, with one of your top over baby faces pending heel challenges, and there's loads of them you could go for. Now, Roman Reigns. And I think this this just makes total sense of Roman Reigns. If you're going to push him like to next level stratosphere, have that match against The Rock. The Rock versus Roman, but only for the Universal title, not for the two titles. Now, not any part of us is ever going to think that The Rock's actually going to win. The Rock's going to be there more as a prop to put over Roman Reigns um, in the grand scheme of like worldwide. I mean, yes, we're loyal WWE fans. Like we know the stock in Roman Reigns. But this is even getting eyes on Roman Reigns, people that haven't even seen him, okay? And like that establishes him is basically like one of the legends of all time in WWE. Now I did the maths, if Roman Reigns was to fight on night two at WrestleMania, he would, which is 203 days away from time of recording this video, he would have held the belt, the universal title anyway, for 942 days. So not quite a thousand, which is why I definitely think even Roman Reigns is going to hold the title even longer past WrestleMania. I really do. I don't think it's going to be a fairy tale. Cody Rhodes wins the Rumble and takes both the belts off Roman. As I said, that scenario that I went with, I think is the more likely and it kind of makes logical sense. Rock and Roman um, should be not, not be fighting for the undisputed titles. Maybe one of them but not, not both of them, like, that's just daft. Like, the, imagine if the Rock won both of them. Like, you've got a Hollywood actor literally with both of your, your main belts. And then you've got mouth-watering matches down the line. And why was The Fiend in my thumbnail? Because then maybe SummerSlam 2023 is the time to bring back The Fiend. At this point, we could have seen Bray Wyatt um, in a number of personas come back. And, and storylines worked. You can still have Wyatt Family versus the Bloodline. You don't have to have the Fiend anywhere near Roman Reigns. And then we get the Fiend versus Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. And maybe things come full circle there and the Fiend is the one to dethrone Roman Reigns after that attack at SummerSlam 2020. 2023 SummerSlam, the Fiend is victorious, defeats Roman Reigns and ends his historic reign. At that point, Reigns has already had his thousand plus reign. It kind of makes sense, right? And another way you could go with it is assuming that WWE have heard how much interest there is in the UK fans getting another premium event back. What if Clash at the Castle actually becomes a, an annual event or something similar? They come back and then we get Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns part two. At this point, Reigns has had the, the belt, the universal title for donkeys and Drew McIntyre is the one to dethrone Roman Reigns finally a whole year after Clash at the Castle. And then this is without even talking about um, the bloodline in Solo Sokoa um, potentially down the line um, having a face turn. You've got to remember he was a face 
uh, wrestler in, in NXT, really over, fit like a glove now on the main roster in his heel persona as part of the bloodline. But you've got to think, there'll be a passing of the torch at some point down the line. That'll be yonks away. You can't even rule out someone like Gunther. Like, honestly, like, he is just, like, top next tier level. I mean, you can have so many cool matchups with Reigns without necessarily Reigns dropping the belt. Randy Orton could get thrown into the conversation there. I mean, we could go on and on. What do you think? I know that was a hell of a detailed video in terms of booking um, creatively, but I honestly feel that is the right move. So many people are saying, bring back The Fiend to dethrone Roman Reigns. I don't want that instantly. I really don't. I also don't particularly want the predictability of Cody Rhodes winning the Rumble and then Roman Reigns still being the double champion. And then you kind of know he's going to win. Um, what if there's a heartbreak of that actually happens and Cody Rhodes actually loses on the grandest stage of them all for the undisputed title? I honestly think WWE smart move house shows and in and, and, and general week-to-week -week shows is to split those belts at Survivor Series. Theory can do that and then you've got, at least if you've got a part-time champion, it's only with the Universal title and not with the Undisputed. But that's my opinion. What do I know? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. As always, be really appreciative. If you like the video, share the video and even better, subscribe if you're new. We'll see you soon. Things are starting to heat up for sure.